who openly was saying that we must not bring these people in this country, they don't belong here. Uh, and there'll be race riots and rivers of blood and all those speeches being made by Mr. Powell. They say, rivers, rivers of blood, it's a river of blood. So it really, we really got scared. And I said, look, here's British people, they don't want us there. We can't go back to India. Where will we go? We eventually, on the Caledonian Airways, who brought us to Stansted Airport, and we were coming down, and then my father was called, and he said, "Have I ever got the malaria?" <laughs> because we were shivering, we were coming down. Uh, but we came down, and we were, in fact, very warmly welcomed by the NGO. They held our hands, and they brought brought us down the plane and took us to a center where they had gathered all the warm clothing. And you can, I told you about the fear which we had before, where our next bill is going to come from, how we're going to deal with the National Front and all the elements of so many hysteria against us in the country where we are not wanted. And uh, no other country wanted to have us anyway. We came down and we were taken to a Center where we were given warm clothing, which is the first week in November, and we were the last ones to leave <laughs> Uganda. And uh, we were taken by a bus to uh, Linfield Camp, which is in Surrey, so I think. Linfield Camp, yes, Surrey. And you know, the, the fear which, because when we were there, we were surrounded by all these army trucks, all green, huge trucks, and Land Rovers, and trucks, and so on. The old army men, you know, with their guns on. And, semi-automatic, automatic guns in their hands and so on. Suddenly we, we suddenly we, we come here and we are told that we are going to move army barracks. That <laughs> shook us as well. I <laughs> said, what's, what's going on? We just left an army regime in Uganda. Now, what's all this about? So they took us to a disused um, army barracks in Linfield. And, uh, you know, they, they had this huge uh, holes where you know there will be so many beds you know laid out for very clean, neat and tidy, but we had to sleep in in a huge room uh, full of beds, uh, uh, and there's just one or two toilets um, in, in the corridor after in, in the corridor there. So we, we we became used to that, and we, as I said, NGOs treated us very well. Uh, we started having good breakfast, you know, with cornflakes and Vitabix and whatever we <laughs> were given. And uh, <coughs> the problem after that was, you know, the food, because, you know, we're not, especially my parents, they're not used to the, <laughs> the Western food, especially the English food, which actually didn't taste anything. He saw this white man sweeping the road, and he said, Chafa, you know, there's a white man sweeping the road. How can this possibly be? Because in our brains, you know, it was ingrained to us that the white man would not do a menial job. And so that was uh, some of the things you know, which we could remember. And we thought we'll, we'll settle in Leicester. The, the, the reason is there was already a community there from Kenya, a Gujarati-speaking community. And um, because my father and mother spoke very little English, we thought at least they'll be able to communicate or deal with the Gujarati is already there, plus the food element, you know, the, the, the Gujarati food. Obviously, by the time we also picked up the African food as well. But, you know, we would be happy having good food and so on, you know. But we were told that, look, that you cannot go to Leicester, because Leicester City Council had put a full-page advertisement in Uganda Argus, saying, please don't come here, don't come to Leicester, because everything is full. You won't get a uh, place in schools, you won't, the social services are, are not geared to taking any more people to help you and uh, please don't come to Leicester. There's a full page edit has been there. So we were scared about that as well, but my father said, and we said, look, it doesn't matter, okay, if they don't want us to come to Leicester, I think we should do that, we should go and see w what the Leicester is all about. It's like a child, you know, as a child not to touch the, the hot iron bar, you would still want to touch it to feel, you know, what it looks like, or how it feels like. So anyway, he said, no, no, we'll, we'll, we'll go to Leicester, but through a network in Leicester, through friends, uh, we were able to allocate a house uh, which we could rent. We requested the, uh, the administration there to see if you could move to Leicester. They said, no, you can't. What we'll do is, first of all, we'll examine what you've got there, and then we'll allow you to go. So they examined this house in Thermiston, 
area of Leicester, North Leicester. Uh, and then it's okay, fine, you can go and they give us the train tickets and so on. So we traveled to Leicester. And then while we were traveling in the train, you know, my brother was asking me, so what are these terraced homes? I mean, you know, rows and rows of terraced homes. I said, yes, people live there. I said, what? People live in those houses? I said, yeah. And, uh, but, you know, there's no, I can't see any gardens there or, it's they're so compact and this is yeah people live there and also the toilets are outside of those homes you know so people uh, use the toilets outside plus they haven't got the bathroom inside the home they go they use the, the public uh, bathrooms you know for, for the showers or and I said okay fine so you just so we couldn't believe all this because in our in our minds it was ingrained that Britain was a land of milk and honey.